Well, hello friends. Welcome back to the shop and to the second installment and hopefully the final installment in the repair of this Savinelli Bing's favorite that we're, we're uh, repairing for our friend Mark in Rhode Island. So in the last uh, episode, you saw me fix the crack in the shank and put this gold band on. That's all we're going to have to do to the stumble. So I'm just going to set that aside for now. Uh, and we, the other big job that we have is we need to uh, rebuild the tenon in the stem. And to do this, th there's a lot of fiddly measuring and planning and all of that. So I, I've actually done that off screen. There's no need for you to watch me measure things and, and work all this out. But uh, I'll, I'll quickly go through what we've got here. So the tenon is basically going to be a long cylinder. Um, it, it's got two parts. The part that's going to go inside of the stem, which is going to be uh, serrated in order to help the epoxy stick, and the part that's going to form the outside, uh, the outer tenon, which will actually be going into the shank. Uh, I've made measurements of the depth of both of these, and uh, I know that I need to make the part that goes into the stem uh, 650 thousandths and the part that goes into the shank is actually quite long. It's 1.294 inches. Uh, if you've got a Bing's favorite, you know that the uh, the tenon is quite long on these pipes. The diameters, and these are, are rough and they're somewhat oversized because I'd rather sort of sneak up on it than turn it to the exact uh, dimensions. This is a 295 thousandths diameter and that should fit snugly in the mortise. And this is 254 thousandths, which will hopefully fit snugly in the stem. So that's easy enough to turn, but then we got to worry about the drilling. And I think this is actually a place where it's worthwhile to you know, take your time and, and really think through what it is that you're trying to do. So we're going to drill from this end using a tapered bit. So the opening here is going to be wider than the opening down here. And that's what's shown down here in the bottom. So I was able to estimate the size of that draft hole, not the larger outer tenon hole, but the actual draft hole, by taking various sized drill rods. And that turns out to be uh, one eighth of an inch. And I actually had, I've gone back and forth on that measurement here. This, this is incorrect. So the actual correct uh, value is one eighth of an inch. So we want this opening right here to be one eighth of an inch. This down here, we're, we want it to be as wide as it can be because that's where we're going to be connecting up to the draft hole in the shank, which is quite a wide bore. And in both instances, we want these to basically be flush fit. So we don't want to have any space on either end of this because that's going to lead to uh, gurgling of the pipe. Likewise, if we were to just drill this straight through, you'd have a step here and that could lead to gurgling. So it's important to get these dimensions right. So the way I'm doing that is I've got a tapered drill bit. Uh, and this is how I drill all of my stems starting at the, uh, the, the tin and end and going all the way through until the, to the mouthpiece. But to figure out how far in we need to drill, I've simply taken this thin piece of wood and drilled a 1 8 inch hole in it. And I can place the tapered bit through, and I know that when I'm done drilling, I want that much of the bit to be extending out from this end of the tenon, and that will give me a 1 8 inch hole. So I'll use this once I've got everything chucked up, and I know what my length, my, my final length is here, to set a point back here where I'll say, okay, I need to drill that far and no further. All right, with that in mind, I think the, the best thing to do now is to step over to the lathe and actually show you uh, how I'm going to make the, the tenon insert. And just so you know the steps that I'm going to go through, because it's going to be a little bit noisy over there and difficult to talk over, uh, I'm going to be turning this end first. I'll turn it to size so that it fits in the stem and we'll check the fit. Uh, I'll add the serrations and then I'll turn it around, chuck this end in, in the lathe and work on, on this end here, uh, turning that to size so that it fits properly in the shank. After that's done, I will then drill from this end, and uh, you'll see me center drill, probably use an eighth inch drill just to get a hole started, 
and then switch over to the taper drill to go all the way through. And at that point, we'll have our, our finished piece. So I'll see you over at the lathe. finished uh, part. Let me zoom you in a bit more so you can hopefully see some of the detail here. Um, so we got the serrated end which is going to grip into the uh, stem. Uh, we've got the tenon end which is going to go into the shank. 
Uh, you might have noticed I, as I was making this, I wound up shortening the shank quite a bit. The measurement that I originally had that I got by probing the inside of the, um, the mortise was actually including the Savinelli filter. Uh, so the filter is obviously going to be a bit more narrow than the tenon, and that's why I, I had hit that ledge rather than the ledge where the tenon is supposed to stop. So I corrected that length, um, and this is the part that's going to be, uh, well, no, actually, this is the part that's going to be butting up against the draft hole in the stem. So this is where we wanted it to be exactly uh, or as close as possible to 1 8 inch. And you'll remember I did that uh, trick measuring the tapered drill bit. And in fact, if we take a eighth inch um, drill bit here, you can see it just it fits in there just perfectly. Now, right after this point, the um, you know, as soon as you get past the opening there, it's going to widen out because the bit is tapered. So it's not going to be a you know a tight friction fit, but that opening is exactly. Uh, one eighth of an inch, so that's good. So now we just have to glue this into the stem. All right, so we've uh, we've manufactured a successful tenon insert here. It fits nicely into the stem. It's a little bit snug, which is exactly what we want. I have fit this to the pipe, and it fits nicely with no gaps. I'm not going to do it again because it's actually difficult to get out of the the shank um, without having the the stem to, to pull on. So. You'll just have to take my word for that, and you'll see it uh, once we see the finished product. So all that remains is to epoxy this in place. Now, I've, I have cleaned this out. I've, I, I reamed it out with a, a drill bit and made sure that I got all the old glue out. But uh, Savinelli, in their wisdom, felt that it was not necessary to in any way put ridges in here or anything. And I don't quite like that because... Uh, while a, a epoxy has a really poor grip on Delrin, it's got a not so great grip on acrylic. So I'm going to go in with this little Dremel tool. And I'm just going to pockmark the inside of this in a few places. And I'm not going to go crazy with it. You don't have to have as much uh, as you've got on this. <clears throat> but it's just to give the epoxy something to grab onto. Alright, and ho <clears throat> hopefully some of that was actually in the shot. Uh, you can see we didn't take away very much, but uh, just enough to rough that up a little bit and give the epoxy a surface to bond to. Uh, clamping on this is not going to be necessary. It's a very tight fit, and there's an airway straight through, so we're not going to get any pressure build up when I, when I put them together. So I think we're going to be just fine. Huh. Thought I had gotten all that out. Uh, I think we're going to be just fine with uh, just letting the epoxy sit. So we're going to use um, this G-Flex epoxy, which is very good stuff. The only downside to using this, and it's really not that big of a deal, but uh, it's not, it, it doesn't cure quickly. It's not a five minute epoxy. So I like to let it go at least 24 hours before putting any, uh, any stress on it and 48 hours before I consider it to be done. So that is the uh, hardener. And this is the resin. And now 
we're just going to thoroughly mix this. I've learned from my time building fly rods that mixing epoxy is... <laughs> if you think you're done, you've mixed it about halfway. Now this, this epoxy really produces a very nice solid joint and I think essentially this is this could be treated as a single piece once it's all cured. Alright, that should be good. So, I'm going to try to be careful to not get any epoxy too close to the end here or too deep in the hole because I don't want to clog the air. I'm sorry, I'm out of shot there. Uh, don't want to go too close to this end or too deep into the, the hole in the stem because I don't want to wind up clogging the, the airway with epoxy. That would be bad. Uh, also, we, we don't want to have epoxy in the airway. And you know, I've been asked about using epoxy and is it toxic and so on. Well, this is never going to come in contact with the the smoke stream because it's basically going to be sealed below the Delrin. And I'm trying to apply enough so that I can get all those grooves filled in. Again, without going too close to the end. That looks pretty good. So now we will put these two together, turn it to help distribute the epoxy as it goes in. And there we have it. Now I'm going to use a alcohol wipe. And th these are wonderful. You can get these in the diabetic supply uh, part of the drugstore. Uh, they're like a dollar fifty for a hundred of them or something like that. And they really, for, for jobs like this, they're great. So I'm just going to use that alcohol to wipe this off. So most epoxies, if not all epoxies, are alcohol soluble. So it does a nice job of cleaning up. There we go. And one last thing. Just in case I had any stray epoxy get past me. I'll do another one just for good measure. There we go. So now we just will leave that alone. And we'll let it set for 24 hours. And at that point, we'll be able to test fit. But based on what I've already done off camera, I can tell you that it is going to fit well. So I'm going to let it sit for 24 hours. After that, I will bring you back and we'll take a look at the finished pipe. And here we have the finished repair. So the tenon is a nice, easy fit. Delrin is a great tenon material because it's so slick. Uh, it's relatively easy to fit it in there, but then it sinks home. And uh, you know, it's perfectly, perfectly stable. Uh, the band, I think, looks pretty good. Uh, not that different from the original, really. Uh, I, I simply buffed the band and a little bit above the band on the shank, just very lightly buffed it, just to bring up the shine a bit. 
and uh, the same with the stem and then I just put a coat of uh, carnauba wax over everything. Uh, the, the pipe was actually in really good condition when I got it. Uh, Mark clearly takes very very good care of his pipes. But at any rate, um, that coat of wax uh, shined it up a bit and I think, it, uh, I think it looks quite good. I think Bing himself would be happy. So hopefully Mark himself will be happy and we'll be getting this in the mail uh, back to Mark in Rhode Island uh, very very soon. So if you do not subscribe to Mark in Rhode Island, please check out his channel. I'll put a link down below. Uh, he is a really nice guy. I've known him for a while now. He's been a constant commentator. Com commentator? Is that the word? Yeah. Constant commenter on uh, my channel and many other channels. And he's begun making videos. He only has one. It's his intro video, but it's a good one. So go and, and give him a subscription and give him some encouragement to make more videos. And uh, maybe we'll see him smoking the bings in a, in a future video. Well, folks, I hope you enjoyed this uh, brief series. And I, if you have any questions, as always, feel free to leave them in the comments. I uh, really appreciate your comments, your likes, your subscriptions. They, uh, they help me keep going with this. So I thank you all for watching and have a great day.